In this video, I'm going to describe methods of accessing the Anki software ecosystem. There are two simple methods of access. The first is to go to the Google Cloud production server implementation of Anki, log in, and do work in the cloud. This requires no installation on your, on your part, and all you need is a browser. The second method of access is to install Docker on your laptop or desktop system and to download a copy of the Anki Docker image and run that image locally. There's a third method of access for those that want to do development or extensive work with Enki, and that involves repository forking. The repository for the Enki software ecosystem is found here at gitlab.com, and all the software is contained in the Thermo Engine repository. If you're interested in following this method of access, go to the repository at gitlab.com and look at the contributing document, which will tell you uh, everything you need to know about how to make a, a clone of Thermo Engine on GitLab and do merge requests and do development uh, in that fashion. The easiest way to access the Anki software is using the production server. The production server requires no installation on your desktop or laptop. Simply point your browser, any browser, to the URL, the server URL, which is easily accessed through the Anki Portal website, and log in with GitLab credentials. If you need GitLab credentials or don't have GitLab access, make a free account at gitlab.com. The login will allocate a cluster node in Google Cloud that runs the JupyterLab server. The node has persistent storage, so your files are always saved between logins, and the entire Enki software ecosystem is pre-built and available on this node. The node also contains a cloned copy of the Thermo Engine software repository so that you have access to all of the notebooks and resources associated with the Enki environment. The node always runs the latest version of the Thermo Engine software, and the cloned copy of the Thermo Engine repository that's contained in your node is updated to reflect changes as they occur in the software ecosystem. Let's now do an example of logging into the production server. The easiest way to get to the Enki production server is to go to the Enki Portal webpage at enki-portal.org. From there, choose from the Enki Server's menu, Production Server. This will take you to a login page and click Sign In with GitLab. And at that point, you can input GitLab credentials into the username and password box. If you don't have GitLab credentials, then Click on Register Now, which will take you to the GitLab page for registering, and you can sign up for a free account. Once you have those credentials, input your username and password into the boxes provided and click Sign In. At this point, you'll be taken to a Google Cloud server, which will instantiate an Anki node. The node will either appear immediately or will take a few minutes to configure. If you're curious about what's going on, click on Event Log, and this will give you a list of activities that the cloud server is going through in order to uh, configure your node. Usually, if you've used the node recently, it will appear immediately. But if not, just be patient. Once the node is configured, you're taken to a splash page, which describes a little bit about the software that's available on the node. You can always bring this splash page back up at your request later on, but you can close the screen, and now you're in a GitLab server page where you can access all of the Enki software. You can create uh, Python notebooks, R notebooks. You can execute Python and R scripts or you can do other activities permitted on the GitLab server. 
The Anki software itself is available to you in a folder called Thermo Engine. We can expand the left hand side here. You can see that's Thermo Engine. If you double click on that, you'll see all of the uh, files and resources available at the uh, Thermo Engine repository website at GitLab. Most of the files that you're really going to be interested in are probably located in the notebooks directory. The notebooks folder contains a number of subfolders itself that all contain uh, Jupyter notebooks that describe various uh, aspects of the Enki software. As an example, let's open the folder called melts-pmelts, and in that you'll find a number of Jupyter notebooks that execute melts calculations. We can open one of them, which will appear over here on the right hand side of the browser window. And then this, uh, this is a Jupyter notebook from which you can execute a melts calculation. And just as an example, I can go up to the menu and say run and run all the cells of the notebook and all, this, all the notebook cells will be executed and the results will be available uh, in each cell after execution takes place. If you're interested in Jupyter Notebooks and how to construct these things, we'll have a separate video on how to actually work with the Enki software uh, and, and do calculations. It's important to understand that the folder Thermo Engine, let's get back up to it, the folder Thermo Engine that contains the clone of the Thermo Engine GitLab repository will be periodically updated. It will be updated as new material is introduced into the repository. The updates will be transferred to your Google Node cloud resource automatically. But if you make any modifications to files in this directory or in this directory tree, they will be preserved. And the modifications or updates or additions will be copied and put into this directory tree and indicated to be different than the modifications that you've made. One more thing, it's very important uh, when you're using the production server, after you're done with any calculations or modifications that you've made, your files will be saved permanently. There's permanent storage on the cloud server. But it's very important just to free resources that before you leave the browser, you come up and you log out of the cluster node. That way, um, the memory resources will be freed and that way uh, everything will be ready for you when you come back the next time. The second easy access method for the Enki software ecosystem is to use a local Docker image. This allows you to run the Enki software ecosystem on your laptop or desktop but requires minimal installation and is not a complex process. What you need in order to use this method of access is an installed version of Docker. If you don't have one, go to docker.com slash get started and follow the instructions for installing Docker on your system. Once you've installed Docker, open a terminal window, clone the Thermo Engine repository in that terminal window using the URL gitlab.com enki portal slash thermoengine.git and then change directory down into the Thermo Engine repository and run the shell script run docker locally.sh. That script will download a container image of the Anki software ecosystem to your local machine. It will run that image within Docker and it will output a URL to the terminal window which you copy and paste into a browser and then you have access to the Enki software on your local system. Let's do that now. Running a local version of the Enki software ecosystem is easy to do. The most important thing is that you need to have Docker installed on your system. If you don't have Docker or you've never used it, go to the URL docker.com and click on Get Started. And this will give you a window that will allow you to download various versions of Docker. What you want for your system is Docker Desktop.
So click on download for Mac or Windows or Linux and follow the instructions and install Docker on your system. Once you have Docker installed, move to a terminal window on your system. It can be any terminal application that gives you access to the root file system. Once you have a terminal window open, check to make sure that Git is installed. The easiest way to do that is to type at the command prompt which git. And if git is installed, a response will appear on the terminal screen that says the location of the git executable. If git is not on your system, then you want to point your browser at the URL git-scm.com and follow the instructions at this website to download a version of Git for your system. 99% of the time, your system will come pre-installed with Git. Let's move back to the terminal. And at this point, we now want to issue a command to go to gitlab.com and clone the Thermo Engine repository. The command is git space clone space https colon dash dash the name of the GitLab Enki portal group and thermoengine.git. Hit a return and this command will go to the GitLab repository and download the thermoengine repository and clone it to your system. At this point if you type ls, which is a list of files, you'll see thermoengine and you can move down into the thermoengine directory. If we again do ls, you'll see a list of files, the beginnings of the directory tree of thermoengine. This is a complete clone of the thermoengine repository. It's your own version of it, your own local implementation of it. And if you're interested in keeping this uh, cloned version of the repository up to date, every once in a while you should enter this repository and issue the command git space pull. And this will pull all the latest changes of ThermoEngine to your local machine. In practice, once a day, once every other day, at least once a week, and you'll always be up to date with ThermoEngine software. The root directory of the ThermoEngine repository contains this file called run-docker-locally.sh. This is a shell script which will execute all the commands involving Docker to actually download the container image of a running Enki software ecosystem installation and get it going on your system. The way you execute that file is, this, is to type dot slash and then the name of the file, which we'll is copy it and paste it and let it run. The first time you execute this script, it will probably take a few minutes to configure your system. Now my system already has the image installed, but on your system it may take some time to download all of the various parts of the Enki software ecosystem and, in, and initialize them and install them uh, in the Docker resources of your system. The nice thing about the Docker system is that it only downloads parts of the image that have gone out of date. So in my case, for example, everything was up to date, so it, it didn't have to download anything. In your case, the first time it's going to take two or three minutes and it's going to download all the various parts. But subsequently, when you invoke that shell script and generate this image to use on your system, um, it will only download the parts of the image that have changed. So that's very convenient. Once the run docker shell script has executed, it will generate a URL and what you need to do is copy that URL, it will be different each time, and paste it into your browser. So let's go back to the browser, paste that URL up at the top, and hit a return. And at that point, the browser will go to a local copy of the Anki software ecosystem on your 
laptop or your desktop that is running within a Docker container, and it will be the complete Enki software ecosystem. Close the splash screen, and you again have access to Python and R Jupyter Notebooks, Python and R scripts, and all of the uh, Enki software resources that you would normally find on the production server, except they're now running on your system. The other nice thing about this installation is that you will have access to all of the files that are available to you in your cloned repository. So the clone that you made of the Thermo Engine repository sitting on your desktop is available to you here. You can double click into it and you have access to the entire directory tree. These are files that are available to you on your system. So if you make modifications, if you make additions, if you do some work within the container image, running the container software, all that work will be preserved and available to you once you exit the container. As an example, we can try the same example that we did for the Enki production server. Open the notebooks folder, open the pmults folder, uh, find the one of the pmults notebooks and it will be available to you and can be run in exactly the same way as it was done on the production server. Once you're finished working with these Enki files and with the notebooks, then it's important to go up to the file menu and to shut down the server resources. If you do not shut them down, the next time you try to access the container, you'll be asked to rejoin the previous invocation of the container. You may have forgotten the, the URL that was used and so on and so forth. So the best thing to do is to always shut the local server down after you've completed your work. And now you're done. And if you go back to the terminal, you'll see that the kernel has been shut down and the local version is finished. If you have any questions about accessing the Enki software ecosystem, file an issue request at the Thermo Engine repository located in the Enki portal group at gitlab.com. An issue request would be filed to suggest new capabilities for Enki, suggestions for improving the software environment, and suggestions for improving access. We welcome those suggestions and hope that you enjoy using Enki.